Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Or, okay, let's be honest here, it's just gentlemen. But anyways, we're going to be doing another Mythbusters episode. I've gathered quite a few interesting myths that have heard going around, and here to bust them, or prove that they're true. Starting with one that had came from a shooting range video that Gaijin had posted a month ago, episode 208. While the majority of the video was just covering the usual topics and had some torpedo boat stuff in it, at the end of it, when they were answering some questions, they showed some gameplay footage that revealed a very interesting vehicle in the distance. The developers get a strange fire in their eyes. A lot of people had come to the conclusion that this was a T-90 and that Gaijin had accidentally leaked this before the tank was actually out. Initially I had called it off saying that it was most likely two different tanks and they didn't actually use a T-90 model. However, many people still believe that it happened to be a T-90 model. The strongest argument I've seen that said it was, was on this Reddit post where they had taken an image of the part of the video and and broke it down, attempting to point out what looked to them a crosswind sensor, perhaps a machine gun, some ERA, and where they assume the gun is. Now, if you read through the post, it might convince you, oh man, what if they did accidentally reveal the T-90 before a patch? So I thought the best way to disprove this is to recreate the scene, and that's exactly what I did. It took a while to get the IR lights to turn on at the same time, but me and a few of my squadron members were able to pull it off. The location happened to be directly where the north left-hand spawn was, and the first thing that this reddit post does not seem to understand is the distance between the tank in the video and the supposed T-90. It's a good few hundred meters and if you've ever looked at anything ever you would notice that things that are far away get smaller. So while the IR dazzlers on the T-90 are quite far apart almost on the other sides of the turret for them to be as far apart as they appear on the video would have to be the size of two tanks. I know this because I recreated it with two tanks and we actually had them closer together than they were in the video but also in in the reddit post try to point out where the gun barrel would assumably be however the t90 is supposed to have a 125 millimeter gun which is about five inches and for that to be a gun barrel it'd be much bigger than five inches we'd be talking battleship cannon sized rounds the rest of the evidence that the reddit post puts forward i could say is explainable away by it's just artifacting you see a strand of pixels you can't say what that is so how did they create this themselves my assumption is that they took two tanks tanks, slap them together, being controlled by bots, had them on a timer to shine their IR lights, or maybe when they spot the player, I don't know, and then just drove over the hill, and the IR lights turn on at the same time. It's very possible also that they had it manually done. It seemed to me at the time that me and my boys were having an issue with having them shine at the same time because we were located on different continents. Of our gaijins, they're all on the same continent, in fact, most likely in the same building, so I doubt they would have much latency. So as a final verdict, I'm gonna say this is busted. There was no T-9 in that video. It was two separate tanks. Now this isn't to say that the T-90 isn't coming. I don't know. I can't say. It would be very likely because they kind of hinted towards it quite a lot. And if you think about it, it's going to come eventually. But this little blip is no proof that it is coming. Now on to other interesting rumors. Next up is War Thunder flat. Now, I don't mean flat in that way, you disgusting weeboo perverts. I want to know if War Thunder has curves. This is a rumor that I heard many years ago when I first started playing. It was that if you flew high enough, you could see the curve of of the planet that you're fighting on, supposedly Earth. And oddly enough, throughout my War Thunder career, I never really went that high. Maybe a few times, I wasn't really looking at the curve of the horizon. I was more focused on fighting the Spitfires. And I never bothered to go up there in a test flight because it takes forever. But now that we have Mach 2 jets, it's actually pretty fast to get all the way up there. So that's exactly what I did. And once I got up there, well, see for yourself. Now I'm no globe head, but that looks pretty curvy to me. Also, we're around to do some random weird things that I usually do for these videos. Starting with random missile tests, we wanted to kill a tank with a missile, an air-to-air -air missile, that is. Now, the original test was pretty easy to set up and do. You had a helicopter hover in front of a jet, and the jet in stationary position on a runway, or a road in this case, would fire its missile. However, unfortunately, for some reason, the footage I had of me shooting the tank with the missile had been deleted. I had another one. However, it wasn't as spectacular as it didn't kill the tank because we were shooting a P-40. So we went to re-record it, and it happened to be that Gaijin changed changed the way to prevent people from killing other aircraft when taking off. You couldn't fire rockets or ordnance on the ground. Thanks to a group of idiots, 
being idiots and Gaijin not knowing how to make that not happen. And so they just go for kind of the method that I would do if I were programming the game is just make it so you can't shoot rockets on the runway, but which wouldn't really be the best method and will probably complicate things further down the line. But anyways, it made it so we can't be on the runway. So we got around this by using helicopters and we were able to strike a tank with a anti-air missile. However, it did not hull break the tank. However, it did critical tank and also travel through it, hitting the helicopter that I had originally locked onto. There was a moment in which we were able to get a Ka-50 to shoot an air-to-air -air missile at a lighter tank and it did die. However, I didn't get a very good shot of it because my assistant did not inform me that he was firing a missile. We were also able to get the Mirage to fire its missile at a tank and successfully kill it, which is like some sort of bizarre cursed War Thunder image. Speaking of which, we also decided to kill things with things that aren't supposed to kill things, notably smoke rounds and smoke grenades. First, we shot an aircraft with smoke rounds and did successfully kill it. However, smoke grenades don't seem to do any damage to it, or at least they weren't able to do damage to me. Kind of hard to aim those things. We were also able to kill a tank with a smoke shell, as it is kind of like just a really small HE shell, so you can ammo rack other tanks with it. Now, smoke grenades, I was actually able to do damage to enemy crew members with these. However, the thing seemed to fire in random directions, so it was really hard to consistently get more damage. I was able to strike him a few times in a row, changing the color of the crew member, and theoretically, if I were to continue striking him, he would have died, which technically means that you can kill a tank with smoke grenades. However, I was unable to, so if you are able to do it before me, you could steal the title of someone who killed a tank with smoke grenades. And I'm pretty sure I also tried to kill a boat with smoke rounds. However, I don't remember how that went, and I may have deleted it, because a lot of the times that we're trying to test these things, majority of it is the guys who are helping me mess around and randomly killing me. But to continue on in the fashion that these videos typically go in, we decided to put things on things that are not supposed to be on those things to see what happens. We tried to put a tank on a tank and it slowly slid off, which seems to be how Gaijin's physics work. When we try to, once again, put a tank on a floating tank to travel across the river, this time we actually were successful at doing it, though the same thing happened and the tank slowly slid off, unfortunately. And a similar thing happened when we attempted to land a plane on a boat. But that situation was much less fortunate as the aircraft had sunken into the ship and was slowly torn apart, which makes it seem as aircraft carriers are not happening anytime soon. I wonder if ever in the future Gaijin will rework the physics engine so it's not so jittery and then maybe we could have aircraft carriers. But one thing you can do with aircraft and ships is sink aircraft with torpedoes. Of course, you can drop torpedoes on enemy aircraft. In fact, you can drop bombs on enemy aircraft, but you can also strike a aircraft with a naval torpedo, which I'm pretty certain the torpedoes would actually be traveling too far underwater to actually strike the plane. However, guys should make them work as death lasers or whatever so they can strike torpedo boats. So just because you're floating on top of the water does not mean you're safe from the torpedoes. Remember to keep an eye out when you're stealth capping the magic circles. And that's just about all the myths I have for you this month. As fun as these videos are to make, finding proper myths to bust on them can be hard and even harder at times is busting the ones that are rather tedious. Lining up a helicopter so it strikes a tank with its air-to-air -air missile when it fires upon another helicopter is quite hard to actually pull off. So I hope you enjoyed watching it happen. I'm not going to thank every single YouTube member and Patreon, but I want to make a big thank you to all of them as they make life a lot easier. So if you have any comments, concerns, or questions, be sure to hit me up on my Discord or in the comments below. If you've liked the video, be sure to hit like button. If you didn't like the video, don't like the button. I make War Thunder weekly news videos every Sunday and make random views throughout the week, which this is one of them. And I like to stream on Saturday, so be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload anything. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And in terms of bonus myths, the Type 59 Jaguar is actually a terrible tank and it would not be a good premium. Despite its looks, it actually has no composite armor. Perhaps some was intended, however, it never got any. So Gaijin no gib, please just type 99A.